only taught. He was a great teacher. And he was a great academic. With a toddy pad and a dead cough, he again is equated with Allah. You know, dear Nagraj has written very meaningfully on this. He thinks of Rilke. In a Rilke poem, in the metal currency, you now which is used as money, desires to become the original Adiru is what is Adiru, the, that which you take from the earth, what you take out of the, the, the purest form, we use the word Adiru, Adiru is the, the manga, you know, gold also comes as Adiru, you have to purify it and make it gold. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, I forgot the word, oh. So, the desire of the nanya, the money, to become adhiru, the world, to go to its purest world form, that's the real kind of And in most of these folk tales, folk epics, there is this desire to go back to the essence of being human. So, this was the contribution of Dalits in the past. And Dalits in the present, who have knowledge of this oral literature write differently from Dalits who are just awakened by modern journalism and so on. If you have inherited the past, you will see that the past doesn't belong only to the upper caste. The past belongs to you all because there were great epics. So the quality of writing becomes different. It is no longer mere realistic but it comes very near magic realism. You know, which is not merely something which you find in the Latin American countries. Our Bhagavata is almost a Latin American classic. There are more myths in Bhagavata than any other story. Every page begins with a new myth, myth making. That, that, that is there. And that is there in the oral epics of these people also. And in Canada, one of the writers who inherited this was Devanur Mahadeva. And hence, it is not indignant, but it has indignation built into it, metaphorically. So, what is metaphorically built into burns for a longer time than the fire which burns and gets extinguished. So, that slow burning material is there in the past, is there in the present, if only you know how to use it. I will end it with a story again. The story is called Vadava by Mahadeva, who I think is a real generator of the entire tradition of Dalit writing in Karnataka, which goes back to four to five hundred years, maybe even earlier, but we don't know much about the earlier. But these are preserved through telling and retelling, and Canada University has been publishing books based on the oral literature. This Vadalada here is a woman who is very fond of a, a fowl, a male fowl, a cock that she has been rearing for a special occasion and it is lost. When it is lost, she goes in search of this bird. And as he goes in search of this bird in every Dalit's home, thinking that they might have stolen it and cooked it, there is a description of smell and sound and uh, house, you know, she is searching for her last this, but it ends up in a great description of a whole community. Then she comes home and she has one child who goes to school, a very intelligent child, and the child begins to write a peacock on the wall with uh, the chapters. You know, she writes it. And the peacock begins to dance in her imagination. And then she tells that child is a story where the child becomes a queen and marries the king. It's in her dream. And then in the evening, all her sons you know, bring uh, nuts from a garden you know, where they have grown katlekai, uh, the groundnut. They bring it in big uh, sacks. They sit around the fire. It's almost like a yetna bone fire inside and the worshippers all around. They are hungry. They begin to eat groundnut and then throw the husk into the fire. Eat, 
throat. It's almost like offering it to Agni, the great Agni. So they offer all the husk. And then the landlord gives a complaint to the police that he has lost all his ground rents. And the police come early in the morning to see whether they are in any ground rent. Their hunger is such and the fire is burning so fiercely. Not a trace is left. It has all gone into the jirna. The jirna inside. Nothing is left. And the, the feta becomes an laughing stock. Everyone laughs at the feta. And then the police inspector comes and he has found the cock, you know, which was stolen. And then he says to the mother, mother, this is mine now. He takes it away. She loses it to a police inspector. Now look at this story, you know, it is told in terms which a 14th century, 15th century telling could use. But it carries a profound kind of experience of I have written a long piece on this. This is something like a yajna, the eating of the, this. And they are so talented that they can steal. And then in the whole house, you know, they go in search of the house, they don't find any peanuts. But there is something found in that chart. They used to do spinning at one time, in their forefathers' time. So there is a spinning wheel in that house somewhere not taken care of. You know, Gandhi had to search for a spinning wheel and then he got one and then got his whole idea transformed when he found one. So in this house also a spinning wheel is found. Devnur Mahadeva doesn't explain any of these. He is a, he's a much younger writer than me and he is one of the most metaphorical. And I think, you know, in every language, if you look at Delhi literature, the way I have looked at it, the, through metaphorical expression, etc., in the past, in oral compositions also, then you have a richer tradition than what you think there is. That's why even Duravastha is a text, but you may be able to go to earlier texts. Thank you very much. I have much more to talk about it, but I think this is enough because it will take you to a new kind of a literary composition. Thank you very much for listening. Such. Thank you, Professor Murthy. We are not going to let, all, let you off so easily. We are going to have a little bit of discussion if there are some questions, clarifications to be asked. If there is a question, if there is a question, you a longer dream which is not easily fulfilled. Now you know if you think that Dalit question is fulfilled, if a few Dalits, 18% of them get jobs, yes politically it has been made possible but the Dalit question is not resolved by just giving them a few jobs. But is it necessary to give them jobs? Yes, politically it is necessary. Is it enough? No, it is not enough. So there has to be a transformation of the mind. And I think the poetic way of doing it slowly transforms the mind. Keeps an idea alive for a much longer time. That is because of metaphor. And that is the function of the metaphor. If I understood you correctly. Uh, a lot of non dalits have written Dalit novels. I mean, they are sympathetically portrayed Dalit novels. But uh, in the present, you have an inside-outside perspective. Uh, they say that non-dalit literature cannot be 
considered as non currents when the novels about currents cannot be considered as non current i would like you to comment on that you know i am very happy when that is begin to write so we should not make use of this argument to say that we can represent currents the great man jyoti basu once said there is no current in your cap i represent them he said that's a wrong answer none of us can represent them i mean you know that's a kind of a an arrogance so i won't by that kind of argument that is jamsar should write but non dalits in parishrams you know duravastha he is not exactly a dalit but when it belongs to a caste it was also that one so great things can come in kara in in kannada the first great anti antichibility novel was chomanaduri written by a brahmin shivram kara it's a great book even for the dalits because it's a book you know which talks about self respect not merely gaining of from lands such a so that is a contribution to dalit consciousness but dalits themselves when they write i think they bring a certain medium you know which is closer to them a certain medium there is a certain different kind of a uh, music there before raising my questions i would like to introduce myself i am sunil kumar pandey doing my mpil at the department of the uh, institute of english where uh, dr ayer parent was a teacher and mentor my question is we quite often see that dolit literature always seems to be uh, presenting the discrimination the experiences of this discrimination and uh, their backwardness on uh, based on different issues but my question is since it uh, presents their discrimination and sorrows and uh, their uh, backwardness always what is the future of dolit literature I will tell you what is happening with Dalit literature now. Quite a few Dalit poets are more philosophical now. They have turned towards Buddhism. They are there is a much more spiritual content, which again is a kind of protest. Protest need not be just protest, but if you take the Buddhist point of view of language, of 